Hi everybody, uh, James Schumark here. I'm the co-founder and CEO of the Startup Race. I also run the League of Entrepreneurs meetup groups here in Edinburgh. I've been doing that for over three years now. And we run uh, six events a month here in Edinburgh now. And I'm happy to be with Kirsty McKenzie, who's going to be our guest speaker at the League of Entrepreneurs on the 8th of October. And I'm really excited because I think Kirsty ha has a great example for young entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs, people who, who really want to make a difference and do the right thing. So uh, to find out what that right thing is, could you tell us what your origin story is for I Multiply, please, Kirsty? I can. Uh, so I Multiply is a financial recruitment business. And uh, I started in recruitment as a graduate and loved recruitment because it's a fantastic career. You meet lots of interesting businesses and um, you really help people along their career journey. Um, however, I quickly realised that it's got a very mixed reputation as an industry. And um, I know I'm sort of researching why is it that people don't really respect or like recruiters? Um, some people do, but it is, as I say, it's very mixed. Mm. Um, I realise that it's because some of the behaviours that recruitment companies mm. reward. So um, I realised early on that people in the business I was working for were rewarded based on how many CVs they'd sent to an employer, how many calls they'd made, how many minutes they'd spent on the phone. Very internal focused um, KPIs, really. And actually, it wasn't about the customer experience. Mm. Um, and I wrote a list of reasons why people don't like recruitment companies. And people were feeling that they weren't being listened to, um, the recruiter wasn't sort of delivering to their expectations. And actually, if I looked at the list why people don't like recruitment companies and look at how consultants are being rewarded internally, it made sense. Mm -hmm. I could see um, that those internal behaviours were having a knock-on effect on the customer experience. And of course, in recruitment, you have two customers because you've got, you've got the employer and you've got candidates, mm -hmm. people looking, looking for work. Um, and I guess the other issue is that recruitment sometimes see the employers as the customers because they're mm -hmm. paying an invoice mm -hmm. and the candidates as a commodity. Really, yeah. And that's, that's all a bit wrong. So I set up iMultiply seven years ago and I decided that to be truly different in a service-based business is not good enough just to say oh, we're different or we have these fantastic values. It's about processes that you can actually put in place that are scalable um, and reward the right behaviours. Mm. Um, so I've spent a lot of time thinking about what are those right behaviours and um, just to give you a snippet of something we do a bit differently is I've now got a team of 20 and um, they're actually rewarded on how happy our customers are and again the customers being both the employer and the candidate and so much so that their bonus is tied in purely to how happy our customers are wow, wow. rather than how many minutes they've spent on the phone i can i can mm, care about that that's so fantastic it's not rocket science but it is different yeah but you, obviously you took the leap you took a plunge you decided to give up your day job and yep. invest in i multiply how, how did that feel yeah, people do ask me that all the time, and I, th I feel like what I'm supposed to say to that is, oh, it was, you know, it was really difficult or really nerve-wracking. Um, it was a leap, and I was conscious it was a leap, but, do you know, naivety, I don't know if it's naivety or ignorance, <laughs> is, is actually a really, a really powerful thing, because I had, I had a lot of self-belief that I could just do it. I did have that confidence, but I'm very lucky because I had people around me that, that said, you know, just just go for it. I had a very supportive family. But interestingly, my colleagues were saying, well, you can't set up a recruitment business in the current uh, climate, or you can't do this. And actually, I just was so optimistic. I, I thought I could. And I, I just think if you truly believe you can do it, and you're willing to make mistakes along the way, then, then just go for it. But it's like, it is risk and reward, isn't it? Mm. I was willing not to take a salary for six months. I was willing, if I wasn't making revenue in that time, to move in with my parents. Um, I went out and got some investment um, and I wouldn't take no for an answer. So I think, in hindsight, with hindsight, looking back, I'm like, wow, that, that was a bit of a leap. But actually, at the time, I was just ready to go for it because I think it's because I truly believed 
that the industry needed something different mm. and I wanted the competition to go whoa what's she doing and actually we now need to do what they're doing because because they're gaining momentum yeah. and I feel that seven years on the competition are now starting yeah. to follow mm, suit, which, is mm. a, which is a really nice feeling. So the, the recruitment industry is what we would call a very bloody ocean, there's lots of competition, yeah. very noisy, but you created a new market space effectively because you're, you're, you were rewarding or you were re yeah, rewarding the behaviour you wanted to encourage and a lot of recruitment industries and uh, companies were making the same mistake. Yeah. So it was easy for you to differentiate because of the way you made your customers feel. Yeah, I believe I believe so, and and it, we are truly different in our processes. Mm. Rather, than, I think it's very difficult actually for service-based companies to differentiate. Um, and actually, I think a lot of service-based companies say, "Well, we're different because our service is better." Yeah. And to me, that's not actually mm. that's not good enough. There needs to be some tangible things that mm. that make. Um, that business different and, and actually in Scotland we're, I think we're very lucky because we've got this fantastic business ecosystem um, but I do think there's a lot of light uh, shed on um, product based businesses which is brilliant and service based businesses maybe aren't as sexy mm. and I guess what I want to say to people is look it can be really sexy being in a service based mm. business and you can do two things that are different Yeah. but it does involve quite a lot of time and energy and mm. thought. Mm. And we, we talked about the, the mistakes that you made and what you do differently and how, you know, who your true competition is. And, but I'm not going to ask you those questions now. We're going to save them for the League of Entrepreneurs Meetup okay. Group. Yeah. And if you want to hear the answers to those questions, we won't ask them any, any other questions. Please get in touch. But please come along to the League of Entrepreneurs in the Wash Bar at 6.30 on the 8th of October. So you have plenty of time to get a ticket from Eventbrite or join our meetup group, League of Entrepreneurs, here in Edinburgh. So thanks, Kirsty. Thank you. Look forward to it. Yeah, me too.